today I'm going to show you not only how to create original breathtaking images with Jasper art, but I'm also going to show you how to transform that image into a moving work of art that will grab the attention of anyone who sees it. If you're new to my channel, my name is Corey. I'm a writer and content creator, and it's my mission to share with you everything I know about how to make money online with your content. So if you want to stay in the loop on all my latest tips, be sure to subscribe. Quick disclosure, I am an affiliate for the programs that I talk about in this video, and there are affiliate links in the description box below. This means that if you make a purchase after clicking on one of my links, I may earn a commission at no extra cost to you. As writers and content creators, we all know how important it is for our work to get noticed. But with millions of businesses blogging and posting on social media every day, it can be really difficult to get our content to stand out with text alone. That's why gripping, attention-grabbing images are so important for your content, whether that's a blog or a social media post. And recently I've been creating images that aren't only original and beautiful, but they also move. These have been great for increasing engagement on social media and they work really well in blog posts too. The cool part is they are very easy to make and you don't need any special artistic talent or coding skills to create one yourself. Let me show you the process step by step. First, we're going to create some original images using Jasper Art. Now, you can create moving images using any pictures. They don't have to be Jasper images, but I like to use original pictures whenever possible because I want to make sure that I'm giving my audience something fresh that they've never seen before. Jasper Art is an AI text to image generator that creates beautiful original pictures based on text prompts you provide. Jasper Art is currently available for $20 a month and you get unlimited generations with that. So if you want to go check it out, you can find a referral link in the description box. So the way this works is you just describe to Jasper what you are looking for, and he'll generate three to four images at a time. You can use the same prompt over and over again and get different results each and every time. And like I mentioned earlier, you get unlimited generations. So don't be afraid to play around with it until you get the image you want. Now, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty details on how to get the perfect image with Jasper Art because I already have some other videos all about that. So if you're just getting started with Jasper Art for the first time, be sure to check out my Jasper Art playlist for more detailed tutorials. But for now, let's come up with a few pictures here. I've been really into autumn landscapes lately because it's autumn right now and I just really love the season with all its beautiful colors. So let's try doing a treescape scenery image. So for my prompt, I'm just gonna put in sunny tree line. All right, so I'm just going to use that as my prompts and let's create. We have some pretty lovely pictures here. I'm going to generate one more time and see what else we get. All right, you know what? I really like this one. We've got a couple trees in the foreground. On the side, we have a big blue sky here and a nice tree line in the background. So I'm gonna use this one and we just download it by hovering over the image and clicking on the arrow to download. Now it's time to bring this photo to life and that's where Photo Vibrance comes in. This program is so easy to use and there's a couple different things you can do with it. So I'm gonna create a few examples just so you can get an idea of what it can do. So first let's take our tree line picture from Jasper and upload it. And now we have two options here, Magic Motion or 3D Parallax. I'm going to go with Magic Motion for this one. And we can select what resolution we want here. So we can go with Landscape, Square, or Vertical. I'm going to keep mine square just so I can keep the whole image in here. And then we're going to click Next. So let's see what we can do to make this image more interesting. So let's just say I want to animate the sky. What we would do is go over to where it says effects and click on this. And then we have overlays, effects, and skies. We're going to click on skies. And now we're going to choose one that we think will work well for this photo. We have a few different ones here. I'm going to go with these clouds here. And we're just going to drag and drop it over this section expand it a little bit so it covers the whole sky. And we don't want this to completely overlap the trees, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to click draw mask. And this is going to tell the program where we want the sky to show up in the picture. 
So we're going to click on this. And now we have a cursor here. And we're just going to sort of paint over the section that we want the sky to appear in. And we want to try and get it as close to the branches as we can without actually going over them. We can make the pencil size a little bit smaller so we can get into those tighter places. But it also doesn't need to be 100% perfect. So get as close as you can, but don't go nuts over it. All right, so there's our mask. Now, the thing is, if we play this right now, it's very obvious where we have the mask, right? And that doesn't look very good. So what we can do is we click on this edge fading and we just crank this up until it kind of all blends together and then it looks much, much better. And we can slow this down. All right, let's stop. Now let's say that we want to add some movement in this grass. So we want this grass to be sort of blowing in the breeze a little bit with these clouds. What we're going to do is hover over anchors and click on path or sorry we're going to click on single and then we're going to draw some arrows here all moving in the same direction so just clicking and pulling the arrow in this direction now the other thing is we only want the grass to move we don't want the trees to be moving really so in order to limit the movement to only the grass, we're going to click on anchors and then we're going to click on path. And now we're just going to click and draw some anchors across the bottom here, clicking to add points. And I'm just going to close it off here. Across the bottom, back up to the top and then click enter. So now we're only going to see movement within this anchored area here. So now when we play, we can see the grass is moving. And now for my favorite part, let's add an overlay animation. So it's a beautiful fall day. Let's add some leaves fluttering to the ground. So what we're gonna do is click on effects and we're gonna click on overlays and then we're gonna scroll down to where it says leaves. So you're gonna see there's all these different overlays you can add. And even under leaves, there's all these different types of leaves we can put. So let's click this one here because they're obviously colorful autumn leaves. And then I'm going to expand this to cover the frame. I'm just going to scroll out a little bit here. All right, and now let's play it. A little bit fast, let's slow it down. And there you have it. We have a beautiful fall day with leaves falling to the ground, clouds rolling in the sky, and grass blowing in the breeze. Once you're happy with your picture, you first want to save it. So first, we're going to save it as a PDP file. So this is a photo vibrance file so that we can edit this if we want to. But if you're all finished and you're ready to download it, you're going to click on publish. And you can either download it as an MP4 or a GIF. MP4 works great for social media. GIFs tend to work a little bit better for blog posts or anywhere that you're not really able to embed an MP4 without hosting it somewhere. So I'm going to download as a MP4. And we'll call it Sunny Autumn Day. And there you have it, there is our video. Now let's do another type of photo vibrance picture. So this time we're gonna select 3D Parallax. And once again, I'm gonna click on Square and click on next. So for the parallax, we are actually going to make this photo seem 3D. So the background is going to stay put while the main object moves. So in order to do that, the first step is to cut out the object. So 
we're just going to click on this button that says cut new object. And then we're just going to draw a path around the owl. And once again, this is another picture that I created with Jasper art. And we'll connect it. And we can move these dots around a bit if we want them adjusted a little bit. And once the dots are in place, we're going to click on next. And you'll see it sort of turn the main object into a shadow. And it says use the clone tool to fill the black areas of your image or to remove objects. So the idea is we want to replace this dark shadow with background image. So the way we're going to do that is click on start cloning. And we have this circle here. We can change the radius and the opacity of it. And we're going to start cloning this background to cover up this shadow here. So I'm just going to make my radius a little larger. I'm going to, so I'm going to click hold down control and click and that will copy where I was holding my circle over. And then I'm going to bring this down here and start painting inside the shadow here. This is a little tricky. It takes a little while to get used to this. To be honest, I'm still kind of learning it. And take your time with this. And try not to fill, try not to copy too much outside of the shadow because then it looks blurry and weird. So try to only clone inside the shadow here. Doesn't have to be totally perfect, just blending in the background a little bit. All right, and when you're happy with how the background looks, you can click next. And now our owl is back and it's time to animate this picture. So you'll see that you have a timeline along the bottom and you have these little diamonds. And when you click on the blue diamond, the camera options will come up. And this is what we're gonna be telling the camera to do. So for example, if I click on the magnifying glass here and we zoom right in, and I move this around the picture here, this is where we're telling the camera to go. And the idea is we add different points along the timeline here to have the camera move around the picture. So for example, let's click on number four here. And let's say we're going to scroll back out full frame. Bring it down, maybe down into the corner a little bit here. And the more you spread these diamonds out along the bottom, the slower the movement will be. So let's just put one more towards the end here and we're just going to kind of zoom back out into the middle. Okay, so if we play that, zooming out, centering. And another neat thing you can do is add text. So let's just click on text here. So this would be great for advertisements or something like that, a social media post. Um, so let's just say something like, I don't know, winter is coming. And we can change the size by shrinking it down here. drag and move it around. Center it. We can change the 
fonts and the line spacing. We can also add shapes. So let's just say we had a rectangle here. Make that more opaque and darker. And we can layer our text on top of this box. So you'll see down here where it says layers, whatever is first will be on top. So because this rectangle is first, it's showing the layer on top of the text. So if we want to change that, all we have to do is slide the text over in front of the rectangle. And now the text is on top. Okay, now let's see how this looks. Zooming out, there's the text. We can also do a couple other things here. So let's click on particles and we can add some snow, change the quantity and the size. And that just adds a little bit more dynamic to the picture. So let's play it again. And we can also add some overlays here, just like we did with the other photo. So just click on effects and maybe we want to add some snow since this is obviously a snow scene. Let's go with this slow falling snow here. And now we're just going to expand that so that it covers the picture. Put the speed on slow and let's play it. All right, that looks pretty good. And when you're finished, it's the same exporting procedure as with the magic motion. You would just click on publish and publish again, and it will automatically save as an MP4. There's no GIF option for the parallax images. And there you have it. There is our snowy owl. Now, normally photo vibrance is $99 per year for commercial use. That's what I'm paying for it. But if you use my referral link, you'll find a very special offer where you can get lifetime access with commercial use for $49. So if you like this tool, take advantage of this because I don't know how long they'll have this special referral offer. It never ceases to amaze me how far technology has come, even in the past few years, to the point where even non-techie people like me can create these amazing images. Anyway, I hope this video inspired you to try something new with your images and take your content to the next level. As always, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.